It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with financial advisors Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. My name is Mike Bernard. Thank you so much for being with us. I am your host. I'm also one of the certified financial planners on the show. With me, as always, in the KFG studio, certified financial planners and my business partners, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Yeah, this uh, this show, we're going to be looking ahead. So let's look ahead to 2019 and even beyond and figure out what financial progress you would like to make. And knowing how to set great financial goals is kind of a prerequisite to achieving them. And with 2019 on the horizon, we want to spend some time today and help you set financial goals for the year and the years ahead. So that uh, process and listener questions will be coming up this hour. All right. Yeah. Hope you've had a great Christmas. Looking forward to a safe and happy new year. If you have any questions about your situation or if you have needs or you just have a question for us to address on the show, you can reach out to us in a couple different ways. WiseMoneyRadio.com is how you find us online. Submit a question right there on the right. Call or text 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. Social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, just search Wise Money Radio. You can subscribe, submit questions, get content that way as well. All right, if you're a regular listener to the Wise Money Show, you know we talk about goals a lot. We're big believers in goals. And we're going to talk about the process for setting goals. Usually when someone first comes into our office for the first time, that's the first question is what are your financial goals? So we believe in the power of goals, but, but why, before we talk about, about the process, why, why do we believe in them? Why are they so important? I just wanted to get some open air time. Why do we believe in goals so much? You know, I think just the act of slowing down long enough, we, we all live hurried lives, right? We fill up our schedules and we're rush, rushing around. And to slow down long enough to think about what you value most in your life and what you want for the future, that's an important discipline that unfortunately we don't leave enough time for. So just the act of thinking about what do you want more of or what do you want less of in your life, um, it, it redirects you. And without setting some sort of a target, uh, we're, we're going to be prone to wandering. What, what's the old saying? Uh, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. Yeah. I, so I, this I, is target setting. Intentionality. There's mm-hmm. sort of a buzzword right now if you're into leadership books and reading and all that sort of stuff. Living intentionally is a, is a big theme right now. And, yeah, goals help us do that. They reorient our focus so that we live intentionally in a certain direction and how we want to fill our life or, yeah, or remove certain things from our life. Do, do you guys agree? Uh, I'll speak for myself at least. The most satisfying uh, client appointments that we have, the, the ones that have me coming away just filled up and energized, and, and hopefully the clients are as well, are the ones where we've taken the time to get maybe two spouses on the same page with the direction of their life, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's setting goals and, and then maybe seeing uh, all over again that their values maybe match better than they ever thought. Mm-hmm. And their goals are maybe more similar than they even realized. But again, it's it's just the process of slowing down long enough to even give thought to it and give conversation to it when appropriate. Yeah, Yogi Berra said, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace, someplace else. <laughs> I like that. He actually said it better than that. He <laughs> said, if you don't know where you are going, you'll end up someplace else. There we go. <laughs> uh, take two. So I think it's, it's really, really important. And if you study the mind and behavior and how we learn, how we think, and how we behave, a big, a big part of what happens, about 80% of what happens is in our subconscious. So part of what is important for us to do is to feed into our brain what we're, what we're doing, what's important, and where we're going. And then um, it kind of depends because some folks are really – um, have this high responsibility. So they are goal oriented. And so if they write a goal and they don't achieve it, it really bothers them. Other folks are totally fine. If they write a goal and they get fairly close, um, they're fairly satisfied. And, um, I think, um, just personally, I've had some goals that I was really, 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 really focused on. Um, 
And I think um, one of the one of the biggest goals, and I part of me hesitates to say this because it's kind of private, and I talk about it all the time uh, around my wife, and she begs me to stop talking about yeah. it. Um, but <laughs> I on, on March nineteenth of two thousand seventeen was D Day for me, so I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And I had a I had a great lunch with a couple of guys that are some of the most disciplined, focused, highest achieving guys that I've ever known in my life. One is uh, uh, Frank Rossi and the other is Scott Trumbull. And I was having lunch with these guys and Scott is an orthopedic surgeon and I was sharing with him what, what happened and he said, well, you know, the great news about type 2 diabetes is it's reversible. You have all these other diseases that they're just progressive and it's going to get worse until you die. Type 2 diabetes is reversible. And hearing that um, put it in my brain to say, okay, this is reversible. Because when you go to the doctors, they give you medicine right. to treat it. But the, the treatment doesn't reverse it. It just treats it. The behavior change is what could treat it. It's right. So it's not the medicine. Right. So it's, it's a diet disease. Mm -hmm. And so it's, and that's, that's pretty humbling because it's a lifestyle. It's part diet, but it's also life choices, right? As I've seen you since what, so what is that? That's a, would we call it almost two years, year year and a half. Mm -hmm. It's a lifestyle change. It's a, it's a thinking change, a belief change, stuff we've talked about on the show before, it's not just a diet change. It's much more than that. Right. So the things, but the things that I was willing to do towards the end of November of this year are dramatically different than the things I was willing to do when I first got the news. Although when I think about the grieving process, I, you know, God kind of brought me to acceptance right away. But I wasn't ready to make the changes that I needed to make. But my goal was to to live medicine free. And mm -hmm. it's very interesting because they give you these numbers and they say, well, after you're diagnosed as a diabetic, you can do this and this and this. And I found guys like Dr. Jason Fung, who's a nephrologist and he's on YouTube and he's written a couple of great books. And I I just went on this search because what I realized is in talking to various medical professionals, I said, where, who can help me reverse my diabetes? And everyone kind of looks at you like, well, you know, people don't really do that. They just kind of take the medicine. I'm like, okay, I, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. So I had a very specific goal of getting m free of the medicine and free of the disease because I did not want to leave this world one body part at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to be on dialysis. I didn't want to go blind. I didn't all of these. Diabetes is a wicked disease. Mm -hmm. And it it actually is, um, if, if you've seen what I've seen, it is ultimately reversible for most folks. So anyway... Well, and, and we've gotten to watch you do that, right? I mean, and it's been amazing the results you've had. It's amazing the focus you've had. But the thing I didn't realize about that story until you just shared it, and it stands out to me, maybe for our listeners as well, is the power of having someone in your life who can suggest something better for you. Because as you said, all the literature out there, all the opinions that you would maybe bump into in your natural day would say, People don't reverse diabetes. They, they just manage it. They just deal with it. Right. But you were given a vision for, no, I can live medicine-free and I can be healthy. And, and you are. I mean, even, even with a diagnosis of diabetes, maybe because of a, a diagnosis of diabetes, you are healthier today than the whole time I've known you, mm -hmm. 17 years. Yep. And it's amazing. It's, yeah, it's I, inspiring, really. I weigh 30 pounds less than you've ever seen me. Mm. Looking good, man. But... I would, I don't want to lose I don't want to lose what Josh just said because if you're listening to this and you think well I've heard you guys talk before about retirement or saving up a certain amount of money or living a certain way and I just all these people in my life and everything I've seen is suggest that's not possible. No. No, we're we're suggesting an alternative way that is totally possible. Now you've got to live differently and you've got to make some different choices. It's a lifestyle change. Um, but you can do it. It's not just, well, I got to, you know, just kick this can down the road and I'll just trudge through this. No, you can get through it. We're going to talk more about that. 
I'm going to talk about different categories that you should be having goals and setting goals for. And then again, the process for, well, how do you set goals and line yeah. yourself up to achieve them? So we've got that and more coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. So do, I was a little confused because I was thinking you said in the second segment. We will. Yeah, in the second segment. That was our first one. That was the first segment. That's our first segment. Yeah, I didn't think you wanted me to get into it in the first segment. But they, oh, yeah. I was looking at the agenda and it said yes. Right. Yeah. So second segment, we, I, I thought we'd talk about how to set goals in the goal setting process. But I want to hit a couple categories because everyone's thinking about it. Health. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I thought, depending on how long the story went, I was going to say, you know, so that's probably the biggest area that people are going to set goals in right now is their health. But what other categories and relationship? And I've got the wheel of death in front of me. So just kidding. Life balance wheel. So. All right. Cool. Good stuff. And I, I don't know, Josh, I sort of shared it on air and I'll share it with YouTube. Very insightful drawing out of that. Say, Can you say that again? Did you write it down? Someone spoke an alternative way uh, of living? Well, what stood out to me was just the, the two doctors you had lunch with. And oh, so one was a doctor, the other one was a retired colonel from the Air Force. Oh, okay. But, I mean, these guys are amazing. This is why I love being around amazing people, is they inspire you towards amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's been the theme that you've been working towards all along. It's reversing diabetes, Mm -hmm. not getting healthy, not maintaining, not plateauing, um, not getting to an acceptable level. Right. No, I want to get back to normal. Right. And and when I went and saw the doctor last July, he's like, oh, you're doing great. This is, you're managing your diabetes. And I love my doctor. But I said, "Yeah, yeah, I'm managing it. My numbers are perfect with medicine. Mm-hmm. So I got to manage it and have my numbers perfect without medicine. Yeah, and it's like, well, you know, people don't really do that. I'm like, well, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a freak of nature. And you're there. You got to prove it. You got to be consistent with it, right? But you're there as of right. this week. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Well, let's uh, let's let's go. Let's spend a couple minutes talking about categories of goals, and then we'll start getting into the process. And so, so I would I I think the Scott story. Is the once you set goals, then what? Mm. So that could be after the process. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm good with that. Because the process, okay. you know, have a plan, mm-hmm. work the plan. Yep. Throw off discouragement. Throw off discouragement. I think it, I think it's a direction. great oh, example yeah. of why goals are important. But it also just yeah, I think it displays the accountability and having someone else with you in it. So all right. Let's go. When's the last time you had something that you were just really driven towards? Very, you were passionate about it. You were focused on achieving something, and you did it. How great did that feel? Well, that's the time of year. People are talking about resolutions. We're looking ahead to 2019. I read uh, someone posted on Facebook that I, that I follow, a leadership coach guru guy, and said, Um, seasons are for weak people. There are no seasons. Stop using this this season as an excuse to not achieve the life that you want. Hmm. Because so many people are saying, nope, it's the 29th today. I'm going to wait a couple more days, and then I'll get after it. Hmm. No way. And I I, I love it's motivating. So we're going to talk about that today. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike here in the studio with Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory, thank you to the attorneys at Ledoux, Kern, and Keene, as well as First State Bank for making the Wise Money Show possible. Thank you very much. We are talking about goals, certainly after that pep talk I just gave. If you have any questions, anything going on in your financial life you want us to talk about on the show, or really maybe even if you want to address it privately with us, reach out to us. WiseMoneyRadio.com is how you find us online. Call or text 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. You can subscribe to every episode right there on the YouTube channel as well. You can watch us in the studio right now. Uh, Just search Wise Money Radio, Facebook, Twitter as well. You can join the conversation that way. Yeah, and our goal has been from the very beginning 
to stir people up, get them excited and motivated about their finances, and to take the, re- the, the next right step, the next wise step in their financial life. So if our goal was reached after you've listened to this today, you will have spent some time with someone who can help you, and you will have some written financial goals for 2019. And we're going to share with you our process in just a second. If, if you're married and you, or you've got a significant, significant other, we're going to help coach you on how to make one list that you both are passionate about. Uh, I, it seems impossible. I know. I've been there. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about, before we dive into that, you know, this is a wise money show, but we're trying to have you live rich lives, which finances are a part of that. But what are some categories that you'd set goals in? Kevin just shared an emotional very meaningful story to him about a health goal. I think there will be more health goals whispered or <laughs> prayed for or hopefully written down this time of year than than any other goal. So health is obviously a big one. What other categories should you be thinking about when you're setting goals? Yeah, I think you can write uh, goals in a lot of different areas. You can segment your life in a lot of different ways. But the tool that I've been using for a number of years is one that uh, it, it kind of forces me to examine eight key areas of my life. And the areas that I'm, I'm paying attention to and writing goals in, I'm evaluating on at least an annual basis, are things like my spiritual life or faith component of my life, my health, my personal development, my marriage and family, my financial life. That's one of the categories, obviously, that we're going to focus on today. Professional or, or business uh, area, and then giving and volunteerism, w- what am I doing in the community, and then friendships. Those are the eight categories that uh, I, I, so actually this weekend, I'll be sliding a piece of paper uh, across to my wife, and I will be doing the same exercise, is evaluating, and I, I use a scale of one to ten when I look at all eight of these areas, and it just helps me realize, okay, do I have balance in my life, am I satisfied with where I am in all these eight areas. And if I'm not satisfied, then these might be candidates for writing goals for the coming year. Let me, I'll give you some encouragement because I struggle with this too. I've, Josh, I've used that. I've benefited from that tool that you've built, this process that that you're going to share. And my temptation, I'm sort of a go-getter, even on days of vacation, like I've got to get certain things done, even on a relaxing day. I've got to get it done. I've got, I got to check some stuff out. So I'll set goals in each of those categories, two or three, and it can be overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And I think your process is helpful that, hey, even if you're not scoring as high as you want in every category, pick maybe the three you want to focus on and mm-hmm. set some really intentional goals there so you can you can deliver it. So that's been helpful, and I'd pass that on. Let's dive in. Oh, two more words were never spoken. I I, I think um, if you looked up the word go-getter in the dictionary, you would see a picture <laughs> no, of no. Michael Paul Bernard. No, 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 <laughs> no doubt. The man with three first names would be right there in the dictionary. Yeah, that's right, Joshua David Gregory. <laughs> okay. So let's dive into our, to our process. Uh, Josh, you shared earlier uh, – that some of the appointments, financial planning appointments, where we talk through this process are some of the most meaningful. I just had a conversation with one of our advisors here, Ben DeBach, who held a meeting yesterday with this very same topic on the agenda. And and he said, I've never seen them more engaged. Hmm. I've never seen them more engaged in a discussion. And I love hearing that. I love hearing that. So start talking about the process someone would go through or a couple would go through to set some goals. Well, okay, but I want to I want to piggyback on what you just referred to from Ben because spreadsheets and rates of return and insurance that policies That gets me engaged. I I, dive I in. know that's exciting to you, but that's not really what flavors people's lives. That's not what gets people excited. It's about thinking uh, envisioning a more ideal future. You know, what do you want to achieve more of in life and Many of your life goals, I'm assuming, Mike, if we were to ask you what your goals are for this year, you might say, I'm going to read 12 books or I'm going to, there's some, there's some behavioral things, but some of the goals that you're setting for your life have a financial component to them. You know, you, you're going to save up for that family vacation or you're going to pay down some debt or whatever. But 
Um, identifying your financial goals is really difficult left to your own devices. Until you get into some conversations and you're thinking about all aspects of your life, it's hard to tease these things out. As you said earlier in the show, one of the very first questions that we ask new folks when they come in is, what are your financial goals? And it's pretty common for us to hear maybe two or three items. Yep. And then we'll maybe kind of tease out a few more that are inferred from stuff they're doing. You know, uh, someone who has a retirement account at work, well, I'm assuming that somewhere that's a priority for them in their future. So, so we might imply that one. But coming up with a comprehensive list of your financial goals involves not only going through things like that life balance wheel where you're reviewing your whole life and where, where are you satisfied, where are you dissatisfied. It's also looking ahead to some of the life transition points that you're coming to, some of the choice points that you're going to encounter. You know, you may have a job change on the horizon or a relocation. Maybe you're looking to start a family. Maybe you've lost a spouse recently. And these change your financial goals. They, they maybe create new priorities where you hadn't given a lot of attention in the past. And so coming up with a comprehensive list is the most important step because you're just getting everything on paper. Or in our case, in our conference rooms, we get everything on the whiteboard. And right? I, would, I would coach you, don't, don't, uh, don't filter and say, well, I'll give you the ones I, that I think you might want to hear. I'll exclude the dumb ones. No, no, no. Make a full list. If you're married, there's a crucial component here. Do this separately from your spouse. If you're not doing it with a coach in a financial planning meeting, do it separately. And each mm-hmm. make your own list and to the full. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know this is a show about goals, but I just want to touch on that. It's very important that you do this if you're married with your spouse. So write your goals separately and then come, then together. come back together. We'll tell you the next step in a second. Right. But the thing is, when you look at intimacy in your marriage, my observation is, is that intimacy, if, if you're striving for intimacy, it doesn't seem possible. This is just my experience. It doesn't seem possible until you get the financial component of your married life worked out mm. and 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 zipped up and sewn together. Because I've I've seen it. I've seen folks that have been married um, twenty five months, and folks that have been married twenty five years, and folks that have been married almost fifty years, and they still haven't gotten the financial piece right, and it's still. They, it, they're still bleeding. They mm-hmm. still cannot get it right. And so I would encourage you to get help. Yeah. I mean, you know, getting help from a professional financial advisor may reveal one more source of goals for you as well, because there may be some components of your overall financial plan that you're missing. Maybe you don't have your estate plan in place, or maybe you really don't have a comprehensive insurance package to protect your family, that kind of thing. They will help inject some additional goals onto the list, and then you're going to work together to prioritize them. We'll show you how in our next segment. One of the purposes of your financial planners is bring creativity. We're actually going to tell you some ideas of different financial goals you may not have considered. So still, lots to come here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. <clears throat> okay. So we need to recap the steps, right? Yeah, if you want to hit them quick. Right, yeah. And not, then just continue to yeah. move us. Uh, Kevin, you left a couple cliffhangers when you were talking about intimacy that I thought, okay, that word? Where's he going with that one? Okay, he went that way. <laughs> Where's he going with that? Oh, he went that. Then you, you navigated that pretty well. <laughs> well, it's true. Pretty I, well, well. I'll tell you what. So, I mean, in the last... You said intimacy in my, and I'm like, what, where, are you, where are you going? My what? <laughs> and then my observation. Okay, good. My observation. Good. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, you only have to sit with folks that have been married, you know, 20, 30, 40 years and have them say, we're considering yeah. the big D. Mm, yep. And, yep. and you, you say, well, which... <laughs> Is is the lack of of connection financially is that a result of or is that the cause of? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't 
or a contributor, even if it's a, yeah, you're listening even, to this saying, well, it never, it didn't cause it, but is it contributing? I don't even care. I don't even care yeah. what the answer to that question is. I say, well, then get help. One of your goals should be to figure out a way to get harmony because for most folks, when the finances are removed as an issue in their marriage, then they need to get to work on the real issues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, so anyway. All right. Um, kick it back to you, Joshy, and you lead us through it. We'll chime in as needed, but I'd say you drive. Cool? Yep. All right. Are you lacking creativity when it comes to setting certain financial goals, the right financial goals even? We're going to share with you some of the most common financial goals that we hear, but we're right in the middle of, well, how in the world do you set them in the first place? And so we've got a a lot to hit here. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard, coming to you from the world headquarters of Corhorn Financial Group in the KFT studios with me, Joshua Gregory and Kevin Corhorn. Thank you to Bethel College Adult and Graduate Studies, as well as Diane Bennett with REMAX 100 for partnering with us on the Wise Money Show, making the Wise Money Show possible. Thank you very much. We've got some listener questions that we're going to be hitting as well. If you have a question, you can reach out to us a few different ways. Call or text 574-222-2000. It's 574-222-2000. WiseMoneyRadio.com is how you find us online. Submit questions that way. And then Once again, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, you can reach out to us that way as well. The YouTube channel has every single episode if you want to engage in the show that way. All right, Josh, lead us down the path of how do you set great financial goals? Well, in our last segment, we were talking about the ways to tease out a comprehensive list of financial goals in your life. And when when you have all the potential goals on the list, You and your spouse have maybe done some brainstorming separately, but you've merged the list together into one comprehensive list. Then I want you to do what might be the most difficult process, and that is ranking them in order of priority. And the way that I encourage people to to approach this is not with a timeline in mind specifically. Don't don't try to put them in chronological order or you know, the order that you're going to encounter them in uh, your life cycle here. Instead, think of, think of this question. If you could only achieve one goal on your list and the rest were a complete fail, you could not achieve them, what is the one thing that you would want to achieve? That is your priority. That is your number one. And then I want you to ask yourself the question again. If that one, if you could wave a magic wand and that one is done and you could do one more, now what do you do? What's the next priority? And make your way 1 through 15 or 1 through 11 or however many you have, putting them in order, and you're doing this separate from your spouse. This yeah. is a private action. This is uh, an activity that you are uh, l- ranking things in order of your values. It's your beliefs on what should be the priority. Your spouse is doing the same thing, and then we're going to merge them together. The way that we merge them together is by averaging your scores. Now, this is interesting because if you, if what you ranked as number one was your spouse's number three, mm-hmm. then that would average to – someone help me out. Two, two Mike. Two, okay. That would, that would average <laughs> to two. And when you do that for all 11 of your goals or whatever they are, if two – yeah, two is not one. But if two is the lowest number – yep. Then it's your top. Then that's top the goal. top goal. That's right. That's interesting. Because it gives the, both people a voice and buy into that. Yeah, I love it. it. It's also a, an amazing exercise, just from a relationship building, a trust building uh, standpoint. Because I, I said earlier, it's always fun for me to see the surprise in many couples' faces when they realize, oh wow, you know what? Our scores are a lot more similar than what I thought. Because sometimes we as spouses, we get locked into one particular goal, and it's actually not even the most important thing. It's just what we're fixated on right now. I've watched folks who I would have thought I knew what their number one goal was because of how they talk and what they're throwing money at all the time, and come to find out when they were working off a complete list, no, it was way down the list, actually. Yeah, that's interesting. And so when you reveal that to each other and you get on the same page financially, you are just far more likely to put the time, the financial resources, the energy towards achieving these goals because you both believe in them together. 
powerful. Uh, it, it, what Josh is saying, it, we've seen it be powerful. Now, that's sort of the process to rank your goals, but there's still a couple left. You then need to figure out how to, how to achieve them, right? That's exactly right. You, you need to start quantifying these goals as well yeah. because y- you might have one word listed on, on your list, college for the kids or something. Disney. Disney, yeah, that's the top of your list, isn't it? <laughs> I'm starting to buy into that, by the way. Good, because um, it's going to cost a lot. You better buy into it. <laughs> no, um, th- this when when you've got a a list in order of priority, now you have to start assigning timelines and specific dollar amounts, and beginning to think through. Well, what are we going to do to actually achieve these things? Um, you know, maybe not all of them on your list are going to get attention right away, but begin at the top and come up with your game plan for each one. This is where it's incredibly important to have a coach walking with you to help you figure out how do we release the resources needed for these goals? How do we uh, put the right time and attention towards the, the priorities that you've set for yourself? Yeah, those last sort of two steps of um, quantifying and then, you know, starting to work that plan, I often go back and forth with this budget because you might say, well, we've got to set this amount aside for this, this amount aside for this, this amount aside for this. And then you put it in the budget and you say, oh, ooh, that didn't quite work. OK, back up to the next step. How, you know, do we need to adjust our timeline here so that it can fit in the budget? Don't be frustrated by that. Do not be frustrated. If I could tell you one place where a lot of people fail and probably the most important place for your coach to help, it's right there because you'll get to the last step and you'll say, no, we can't do this. And and so this whole process was, I I guess we, I guess we can't do what we want and we'll get really down and nope, it's just go back right up to the next or to the previous step, set a different timeline and make sure it can fit in your budget. I want to, I want to change one word that you just said, because you said the word we often hear, but I want to replace it. A lot of people conclude that they can't achieve something when really they've decided they won't achieve it because there are other priorities that you're trying to balance. Yes. Maybe, maybe you could have achieved that goal, um, but th- the moment you say, I can't, you start closing your mind to the possibilities and your creativity gets cut off, right? Yeah. So don't say, I can't. Instead, explore what it would take to achieve it, and if you say, that's too much sacrifice, that's, that's more than I want to, to pour into this goal, then go back and adjust the goal and say, I won't do it here. I won't do it that way, but let, let's retool, as you were saying. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, and I, as I tell my kids, old man can't is dead. I buried <laughs> him myself. <laughs> I love that. And so when you think about that, a, a lot of times when people say they can't, what they really mean is, I just, I, I can't imagine I can't imagine what it would be like. I can't imagine how it could possibly happen. I no one in my family has ever achieved that. So how would I be any different from anyone in my family? My whole family has horrible financial habits. Therefore I'm destined to have horrible financial whatever whatever it is. And so a lot of times what you want no matter what the goal is is to be connected to people that actually have done it. Mm-hmm. And someone who's a guide, a Sherpa, a coach, someone who can say, no, it's possible, and this is the level of sacrifice that will be required in order to do that. Because if you if you just start with the premise, I can't, you'll never consider what it would take to be able to do it. Josh, you said earlier that when we ask folks, what are your financial goals? Typically, it's two or three that are listed. Let's let If that's you, if you're thinking, well, comprehensive list, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just two or three things. Let's share some of the more, some of the common financial goals that we're able to tease out of people. Retirement, of course, is a big one. And college is a big one. So I'll just take those, college out for the kids. I'll take those off the table. What else comes to mind that you'd want to share to give someone some creativity? You know, I I hear people who have varying um, versions of a debt repayment goal. You know, maybe they want to pay off their mortgage 10 years early, or they want to have their student loans paid off within three years of graduation. Some sort of aggressive uh, goal where they are just pouring it on uh, heavy towards one particular debt and wiping it out rapidly and, and gaining freedom in their life. Uh, that, that's a big one. Uh, one that we're often encouraging to other people 
is having an emergency fund in place. Mm -hmm. It's part of building a strong foundation that you can build from, um, laying that foundation so that you have peace of mind and you have distance between you and crisis living. And then you can go pursue the long-term goals that maybe require more investment as opposed, as opposed to saving for, for the goal. I've heard a better name for the emergency fund, and I'll share it with you. Financial Confidence Account. Mm. Oh, I like it, that. It actually, it actually takes it to the positive instead of the negative. Also, something I was talking to Ben Tabak about. And so, if if you don't get jazzed up about setting money aside for emergencies, maybe you would for setting money aside to have some more financial confidence to go out and get uh, achieve some other things. We've got a couple great tax questions as well. I know we're right at the end of the year, but we're going to hit those and more coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. That was the third segment, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. You know, I <laughs> we got I a couple spent more some to time hit, going through. Um, you know, we're kind of approaching this with generic <laughs> things, but uh, generic goals. It was a fun exercise for me to think through some of the some of my favorite goals I've heard from clients, and they're much more specific, right? Um, you know, it's. I don't know, you know, paying off uh, a certain debt by a certain time, saving up for a certain goal at a certain time. And that might be a fun, um, a fun show to share Ooh. some of the specific client goals and what we had to do to help them achieve it. Oh, yeah. So tuck that away as a maybe a future topic to consider. Yeah, that's good. Michael Paul Bernard. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think we could have a goal of having that as a show. <laughs> All right, let's talk about a couple other types of goals. We'll put the, uh, a bow on that, <laughs> and then we'll uh, get into Braden's question there. Get it? You know, Christmas time, put a bow on it. <laughs> no, I don't get it. Oh, nope. Can you explain it? <laughs> you win. <laughs> Dad joke. <laughs> or a bad, hey. bad joke, actually. T-Rex had a bow on a teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I don't know if we need to spend much more time on just popcorn a few different ideas out, and then we'll cruise. But four segment. Okay? Yep. Thank you so much for being with us today. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. If you've missed anything, a couple ways you can catch every episode, including this one. First, on the YouTube channel. You can subscribe to it. It dings and lets you know, hey, a new episode's there for you to watch. You can watch the whole thing. Uh, we record every episode in the studio. Second, every episode's on podcast. So if you're um, traveling over the river and through the woods, you could just throw it on in the car. Just search Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group wherever you listen to podcasts. And lastly, we've got a streamer right there on the website, wisemoneyradio.com. You can click there. I think it's the latest 10 episodes, but you can click another button and take you to all the rest. But um, you can listen that way as well. You can also submit questions there. And lastly, if you have a question, we're going to hit one from Braden here in just a second. You can call or text 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. We've shared why goals are important, different categories for goals, a process for laying out and prioritizing your goals, especially helpful if you are blending your goals with a spouse or um, or partner in life. And, and now it's, well, what if I'm lacking creativity in, um, in coming up with some financial goals? So we've hit some of the easy ones. One that hasn't hit and that I get really excited about, well, two, vacations. Um, I just see a lot of people who uh, are financial achievers, and so they save and they save and they save, and one day we'll have an experience. And eh, no, I, I, this is why I want you, we want you to have clarity and confidence with your long-term goals so that you don't have to wait and delay everything for some future time. I love the vacation goal, and yep, bring pictures because I want to hear about it. I, I live vicariously. We live vicariously yes. through the people we serve. I want to hear about it. So You know, when Andrea and I were forming our family advisory board, that it's a, a group of three couples that provide wisdom and advice in our lives. They're a sounding board for us. We actually intentionally picked one of the couples because they are very intentional in this area that you're talking about, about making sure that you're spending quality time as a family, doing cool vacations, 
uh, just finding those um, experiential memory making type events uh, that are, are flavoring your life, making all the other financial progress you're making uh, worthwhile. Yeah. And uh, I, I love that. All right, here's the other one I was going to mention, and it's sort of cheesy, and I know it's this time of year, but you guys know I'm I'm pretty cheesy. Gift giving. And and I mean both to family members but also to, to charities. We I did a Wise Money Minute on this. Also, we blogged about it a little bit, how the, the brain activity – when they when they map that and look at how your brain responds to you giving versus you receiving, it's not even close. The excitement and the joy, actually, that your brain, I mean, it's just fireworks when you're giving. And I have found that, too. And, you know, in your marriage, you might say, yeah, we don't give each other gifts anymore. I think, Kevin, you shared that. And, and that's totally fine. And, and that will happen in my marriage, too. But for me, I know my default. I mm -hmm. will be frugal and I will cut corners and I will love someone in my heart, but I will not really show any, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't get you a gift or, or whatever. And so I have to be intentional. I personally do about an anniversary gift, about those sorts of things. And I need to save up for it in advance so that I know, okay, no, I'm good to go and spend this money to show, to, to give someone a gift. So, yeah, anyway. I think, um, in, in being intentional about that, because some people, their love language is gifts. Mm -hmm. And so you have to accommodate that for other folks. And, you know, you're right. Lori and I don't really give each other gifts anymore. I mean, Lori has the gift of me, which I don't <laughs> I mean, what more could you ask for? And so... What's the return <laughs> policy on that? Yeah. <laughs> so, but if you're, if you're, if you're living... Um, generously with each other and you're doing th I mean it used yeah. to be cool when you were dating because um, there were two different bank accounts and when you got right. a gift but now it, when it's the same one it's like well, not a lot of secrets <laughs> right. yeah. let me throw out one more category of of uh, financial planning uh, goals that we come up with and that is the financial plan itself uh, Kevin and I had a, a joint meeting with a brand new client uh, a while back a business owner and he came in with one of his main goals to be, uh, he, he set a deadline for himself to get his entire financial planning team in place. You know, he wanted to make sure he had a financial advisor, a CPA, an attorney, an insurance advisor, the, the whole team working together. And the piece that he was missing was the financial advisor, kind of the, the quarterback bringing everyone together. If you don't have that already, now may be the perfect time for you to raise the level of importance to having your team in place and just knowing who you're going to trust for advice. They will help you determine whether there's other components of that financial plan that need to be built. They will bring that creativity that Mike was talking about earlier. Yep, that's great. I, we got a transition here. I got to sneak at least one question in here. Um, so we're going to transition. Braden's 47 and he's from Osceola. Here's what he asked. My wife and I now have both of our kids in college, but I remember we weren't able to get all of the college tax credits on our taxes last year because we made too much money. With both of the kids now in school, I'm worried even more that we could miss out on some valuable tax credits. What should we do? We're late in the year. We're late in the year, and, and, and most people don't know this, but there's a couple college tax credits, the big ones, the American Opportunity Credit. And so when they were talking about a couple of years ago, free college and all that, I was thinking, well, there's still, I mean, you, you can go to community school almost free because of the tax credits, almost. And so most people don't really care and that never really was brought up. So these credits, though, are important. And making as much money as possible, but keeping as much of it off your tax return as possible, that's really the name of the game. And here on the 29th, there's not much you can do. Maybe you could do an IRA contribution. You could probably do an HSA contribution. Something that's going to reduce your the income on the front page of your, your of your return. Not giving money to goodwill. I mean, that all happens on the second page of your return. You got to look for things on the first page. Mm -hmm. If you're a small business owner and you have uh, an SEP IRA. Simplified Employee Pension IRA, or if you have a single K, now that's 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 a micro business. That's you. Yeah. That's you and your wife. So that's otherwise, if you're part of a bigger business, your your four hundred one k contributions need to happen 
via um, payroll defer, uh, deferral. So. Yep. Yep. So you've got a couple options. You might not have a lot, and you might. But I would. But I would tell you on the 29th, explore every opportunity to help this year. Mm -hmm. But also, don't have the same question. Wait till the end of the year next year. Exactly. Uh, We're presuming. We're hoping that you've been a listener to this show long enough that you know the Indiana 529 plan is a place where you can save up to a thousand dollars in taxes by contributing to the Indiana 529 plan. Um, That's something that they have to have received your contribution before the end of the year, though. And most likely you're not going to get that done here on the the 29th. Right. Um, The next question here is from Mike, great name, 56 in Granger. (laughs) My wife and I are used to getting a decent tax refund each year, but I've heard that might be changing. Is this due to new tax laws? I thought those were supposed to help me pay less tax. We've addressed this a couple times before, but really quick. You, you Likely, Mike, you will pay less in taxes, but the federal payroll uh, withholding tables were reconfigured in late January of 2018. So you have been getting that more money in your check. There are very, very, very few instances where we've seen people are paying similar or more tax than, than they did last year. So you it's quite possible that you've been getting that refund every two weeks in your paycheck. Yeah, that that's really the difference. What I'm seeing, we've had a very busy fall doing tax projections and tax analysis. And I'm seeing, if I could just summarize, 19 out of 20 people, the new tax laws are saving them a, a quite a bit of tax. But probably 50-50 are ones, you know, half of the people are seeing a big difference in whether they owe or whether they're getting a refund because of these withholding tables. So do planning, make sure you're working with a trusted financial advisor and CPA so you can see, well, what happened and why coming this fall when you do your taxes. That's all, or this spring when you do your taxes. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for being with us. On behalf of Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn, and myself, have a safe and happy new year. We'll see you next weekend for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.